In my mind, I thought about how I was going to put the footage together and like what I wanted this video to look like and now I'm sitting here and I kind of don't even know where to begin before I even start let's just let me just show you what I got going on over here hold on my girl sitting right next to me Say hi. No? Okay. Where have I been? <clears throat> Where have I been? March 19th was the last... Uh, was the last vlog that you guys saw. Which means you guys... We have missed each other for five weeks. So where have I been? I want to say that I've been in hell. I want to say that I've been in jail. I want to say that I've been in my darkest of thoughts. I want to say that I've been in my bag. I want to say that I've been in the depths of a severe depression. I want to say all those things and really as I'm sitting here and Thinking back at the last six weeks, five weeks. The one thing that I can say is that I'm at the very edge of freedom. I would be lying if I told you guys that I've had a positive mindset this whole experience. I would be lying if I told you guys that I have been in a positive having like having a positive outlook throughout this process. I would be lying to say that because what it's felt like was hell. What it's felt like was the bottom of the barrel. Still, I'm sitting here now and I understand. I understand certain things in a way that I haven't been able to understand them in over a month. And I don't know if it's because of where I'm sitting. I'm in the patio right now, but this is usually where I touch base with the Taro family. It just doesn't look the same, kind of, because life on this side of the camera has been pure pandemonium. And so everything is just like packed up and kind of just thrown back here. Like I said, don't mind the mess, but because my life has been in shambles. You know, naturally the house is up in smoke, you know? Look at my babies, look at my cards, all packed up. First off, I just wanna say thank you. From myself, my family, thank you, you know, for all the prayers that you guys have sent me so many comments that I've gotten of you guys just sending um, positivity and praying for me and my family. So many of you guys hit me up, inbox me, text me, emailed me, I'm the whole nine, you know? 
So I just want to say thank you guys. I also want to say thank you to those of you who have thugged it out, held me down, waited, given me my space, allowed me the space to uh, come back to you guys when I was ready. Just thank you. Where have I been? Well, for those of you who've been with me for a while, especially those of you who come from the tarot channel, you know that I've suffered with pains in my back for the better half of like two years. I want to say. Upper and mid back pains. We've talked about this a million times, especially on the tarot channel. You guys have seen me in this chair with the heating pads, the blankets. You guys have seen me back and forth at the doctors, at the hospitals, looking for answers, getting none. The last vlog that you guys would have saw from me would have been for the week of the 15th of March, which was when we went to, when we went out of state for IZ's first college conference. That weekend, I was in a lot of pain with my back and on our way back home I on our way back home the ride was pretty good it's about a five hour ride back to New York from where we were and I wasn't in any excruciating pain so one thing you guys gotta understand is that for me the last few years when i say i'm having a good day as far as like my pain my pain level on a scale of one to ten is between a five and a seven five and a seven my tolerance for pain is pretty high and so if my pain is between a five and a seven I'm still able to function or I'm gonna push myself <laughs> to get things done so that's how I've been operating for the last few years yes Shyla I mean I can't get up you're gonna have to give me a few minutes that weekend of March between March 15 and the 16 that weekend was pretty tough for me as far as the pain is concerned and then on the way back home which again the ride is about like five hours the pain was manageable it wasn't anything out of the ordinary i didn't do anything new in that ride i didn't eat anything different than i usually do i didn't drink anything differently than i usually do i wasn't sitting uncomfortably like we had more than enough room everything was good until we hit my block literally we pulled up we was about to get out the car and start taking everything, you know, out the car, bringing it into the house. And my whole shebang went like this, literally. Like, I couldn't even stand straight. As soon as I got up out of that car, the pain, and it wasn't just my back. So another thing that you guys have to know is that since I was a little girl, I always suffered with pain in my stomach always like a young child i was always known as like the picky eater but it's because i would get such bad pain in my stomach depending on what i was eating that it kind of gave me anxiety and made me always afraid to eat anything because as a child in my mind i saw it like if i eat anything i'm gonna get this pain this excruciating terrible horrible no good very bad nothing takes this away pain throughout my life even as an adult i've learned a lot more about just certain things you know being lactose having ibs at one point they thought i had crohn's when i say at one point it was like for a few years i was even taking medication for crohn's and it wasn't working it was making it worse because i don't have crohn's like it just was not a good situation my whole life as far as my stomach is concerned so i'm telling you guys that for context because that day that night that we got home from our trip it wasn't just my back that was in 
excruciating pain it was also like my ribs area and my stomach like i couldn't see how i'm sitting up i'm not all the way straight yet but i'm sitting up fairly straight right now i couldn't even like i would i was standing hunched and it was killing me and i i felt like i couldn't speak because if i breathed in if i took a like if i took a breath it hurt it was painful um and it was a the accumulation like the that, that pain that day, that pain that was something that I had not experienced in 35 years. It freaked us out, to say the least. Like, my family was, we were really on, like, edge that night. I, um, the next day, got up, did what I had to do. Um, I did a reading. I did two calls. I went to my uncle i started the vlog for that week on on wednesday actually the 20th so sunday i was in pain that night i kind of slept it off with the heating pad wednesday fast forward that was a 17 was sunday march 17 the 18 and 19, which would have been Monday and Tuesday, I didn't really vlog. I was just doing my day-to-day. -day. I still had the pain, but it wasn't as bad as it was that Sunday night. Now, Wednesday, I, the 20th, I got up. I decided to take the GoPro. I was going to the supermarket, and I was going to my uncle's house. I was vlogging and on my way to the supermarket, and I started to feel the pain again from Sunday. And it was like, it didn't start off strong the way it did on Sunday, but it was like coming, like you can tell that it was like working its way to getting bad. It was like getting worse and worse gradually. And I came back home. I don't even know how I walked and got through my day because I also was doing the 75 hard challenge with my girl Kiara at this at that time as well and so th in the morning was when I usually do my my walk my 45 minute walk outside and so I did all of that and the pain was like gradually getting bad getting bad I spoke to my man and I was telling him like I don't feel good I think the pain that I had on Sunday is coming back like, I'm going to thug it out for a little while, see if it gets better, if it goes away. I don't know what this is. Quite frankly, I was more annoyed than anything else. I wasn't even scared at that point yet because for me, it just was, here's another thing to add to the list, you know, of shit that I'm experiencing. I also, another thing you guys have to understand is that my whole life, I've gone to the doctor for certain things. Like I said, at one point in my 20s, they diagnosed me with Crohn's, gave me medication for it, and I was like that for like two or three years before they realized I didn't actually have Crohn's. So I'm just so used to and accustomed to the doctors and the hospitals just getting it wrong, you know? So for me, it was just like, here's another thing to add to the list. So at that point, I wasn't even really scared yet. I was just like fuck you know I went home I did everything like you know the hot bath the heating pad trying to relax trying to eat like soup and hot foods and stuff like that and the pain the pain just would not subside it just kept getting worse and worse and worse throughout the whole day Wednesday the 20th of March also, I don't know if I said this in the beginning. On March 5th or March 4th, I actually was in the emergency room for my back. Um, which that visit, they told they gave me a shot, which I still to this day don't even know what the hell the shot was called. But because they told my man was going to take a picture of the, the, the bottle when they were going to give me the shot. And they ended up telling me that uh, 
the information and name of what they were giving me was going to be in my discharge papers which it ended up not being there but they gave me a shot and um they gave me like muscle relaxers and painkillers and send me home okay so if the footage looks a little bit different it's because the gopro died i haven't charged it in a month so bear with me but by three o'clock on wednesday march 20th i i was feeling or the pains in my ribs my chest my stomach and my back because at that point too my chest was starting to feel like pressure I had also started vomiting like profusely I could not stop even when there was like this is TMI this video is gonna be very raw <laughs> just FYI even when there was nothing else left in my stomach to throw up even when there was no more food left we're still throwing up bile and it was so painful <laughs> like just the act of the gagging had me in so much pain like i just i i don't wish this shit on my worst enemy and it's something that i wish i never have to experience ever again in my life it was just terrible. At some point, I remember I have like this pole in my room that used to be like a radiator. I'm in New York City, so you already know, but it used to be a radiator. It no longer is a radiator, but it's still there in my room. And I was holding on to the pole with my feet on the wall and my other arm, I had a fucking garbage bin in my hand. And I literally was like putting pressure on the pole, holding it and vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. Like I just, because of the reason why I was, I propped myself up like that was because of my stomach. When I was just vomiting regular into the bin, it was so much pain on my stomach that I couldn't tolerate it. What the hell told me in my brain that holding on to the pole and putting the pressure against the wall with my feet was gonna help me? I don't know where the hell I even came up with that. It did help a little, but it just looked crazy. Like I remember getting up on the wall like that and my mom just losing it. Like she was freaking out. My mom doesn't necessarily do well um, with shit like that, but also obviously I'm her kid, you know, seeing me fucked up was just not a good, it just was not good. Like it was just scary. I was like that for a little while and then what finally did it for me because in my mind when i realized that the pain was not getting better it was only getting worse that day um in my mind i was like when my man gets home from work we're gonna go to the hospital but i'm gonna have him bring me to a different hospital not the one that's local to me um because that's the one that i had last been to um and that's the one that my doctors my main doctors are affiliated with and like I said, I've had no luck. So in my mind, I was like gonna go to one in Manhattan or downtown Brooklyn or something. Like I was gonna go to a better hospital and get looked at when he got, when he got out of work. That was my thought process that day. But by the time like five o'clock rolled around, 5.36, the pressure in my chest had gotten so bad that I couldn't breathe. And I think that's when for me, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like I, I called my man first and I told him like, I can't wait. Cause he had been calling me throughout the day. Like he was worried cause he heard it in my voice. I just was not good all day. But I called him and I was like, I'm not right. I don't feel right. I don't feel good. This is not okay. Like I'm going to call the ambulance so he was like freaking out you know and then I called the ambulance and I told them basically you know what was going on where I was and you know just the whole nine it's wild because I think about it now and I was thinking about it over the last few weeks because they say that 
like they say before someone dies uh, they have this jolt of like energy this surge of energy and i believe that wholeheartedly i've seen it with my own eyes how people will naturally like prepare themselves even without even realizing that that's what they're doing reason why i'm saying that because obviously thankfully i didn't die right but reason why i'm saying that is because i think now back to that day when i called the ambulance and things were all over the place like i said my mom was kind of like freaked out she didn't you know her mind was everywhere she did wasn't really like focused and it was just us two izzy was in school she didn't know what the hell was going on and i was in bad shape so i couldn't tell the emt or the fire department look this or this or this or or that this is what i've been taking this is what i'm prescribed this is what i'm going like i couldn't really articulate because i was fucking going through it but about two days before this happened monday or tuesday i don't remember what day it was but monday or tuesday i went around literally i gathered all the medications painkillers to muscle relaxers everything that they have been prescribing me for my back i literally put it in one of my boxes that are packaged like i had a little i have a, i have it still a little box it's like this big from one of my packages and i just put all the medications in there and Another thing you guys have to know is that I, my whole life, I've never liked to take medications. I've never liked to take pills and shit like that. Um, and so whenever they would prescribe me something, like if when they prescribe me the muscle relaxers, I, I would try it the way they told me to take it with food, without food, for bed, for morning, whatever. I would try it for a day, maybe two. If I didn't see any difference or if I didn't like the way it made me feel, I would stop taking it. So I had all of these bottles of pills. Most of them are full. Most of them are missing one or two pills, if that. Because the same concept goes for the painkillers. I, I, I wouldn't stay taking the painkillers or I wouldn't take the painkillers at every sign of pain. I just don't like taking um, pills. So anyway, a few days before Wednesday, Monday or Tuesday, I, something told me to like get that box together. I had it on my dresser. So back, fast forward to Wednesday, I'm fucked up. The fire department rolled up first. Um, the EMT came in after and I'm literally hanging off the bed. I had like a tank top on and some boxers, no bra, no underwear. Like I was like fucked up and the guy comes in, the guys come in and they're asking me questions. And I'm like, I pointed to the box, I was like pointing at the box and they looked and I, cause the guy was asking me, are you taking anything and, or have they given you anything for what you're feeling or whatever? And I literally was like pointed to the box and he looked at the box and he was like, he picked out like two or three things from the box just at random. And he was like, is it your back? And I was like, and he was like, and you're feeling it in your chest. And I'm like, mind you, I'm with the bucket still throwing up and like can't breathe and I'm crying. And I'm like, I couldn't even control like what I was saying or what I wasn't saying. Um, Cause I know that I was like screaming at certain points. And then I would like apologize because I didn't intend on screaming, but because of the pain was so bad, I just would start screaming. It was so surreal. They literally dragged me out um, they didn't even hook me up to anything until we got to the ambulance. Like, they literally dragged me out, put me in the ambulance. Um, I had, I grabbed my phone. I had a charger that didn't even have a box to it, like the base. Um, and I think I had like a shirt that I grabbed, like just random. Like, I, I think I had one o'clock because I walked out barefoot, like they took me out barefoot. It, it was just so intense and surreal and traumatizing, the whole experience. And they put me in the ambulance and I remember feeling like, holy shit, like I cannot breathe because it just kept getting worse by the minute. Like I think as soon as the ambulance came, 
the intensity of what I was feeling started getting worse more rapidly. And so I'm in the ambulance and I'm wailing. I ain't even gonna hold you. I literally, which again, there's footage from this, not that I took intentionally, you can't see me or see the, the EMT people, but I was sitting on, cause I just had like, they kind of like the stuff that I had, like they just put it down on the gurney and I was on top of it. And so when they hooked me up to the stuff that they needed to hook me up to, they actually gave me fentanyl in the ambulance. I, I, I vividly remember the guy like saying it. And um, when we got to the hospital, we, they said it again. They gave it to me and it didn't work. Like, I remember the guy telling me, don't worry, but I'm gonna give you something for the pain. I'm like, just breathe, 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 try to breathe. And I was screaming. I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And like, again, I'm putting all this footage. I'm gonna put it at the end of this. I just wanna explain to you guys and give you guys context as far as like what you guys are gonna see and what you guys are gonna hear because I didn't, record everything and the little bit that was recorded a lot of it was not intentionally recorded um so there's no actual footage of it it's just audio and then there's others that i after a certain point i was lucid and i was like telling whoever was with me like record a few seconds like just make sure you get this i want them to see all of this so again, you guys will be seeing that at the end. I should probably put like a little snippet in the beginning before I start talking. So shout out to the EMT workers because at one point, because I knew where we were going, like what hospital they were bringing me to, I kind of was low-key freaking out too because like I said, I had been going to that hospital. They haven't been finding anything or really doing much to find out really what's been going on with me. And... So I just kind of was like freaking out, you know, and I kind of like grabbed the EMT worker that was with me and I grabbed his his arm. Shyla, you in true form over here blocking the camera? Some things don't change. Some things don't change. <laughs> I had grabbed the EMT worker by the arm at one point and was like, yo, don't leave me, please. Like, and he was like, yo, I got you. He was like, try to breathe. Um... You know, like, we're not going to leave you stranded. Like, we're going to try to help you as best as we can. And, um... Shyla, your ass is in the camera, fam. Jeez. Yeah, then we got to the hospital. And... They rolled me in. I'm freaking out. And at that point, I had already told the fire department. I had told the, the person on the phone, the operator, the 911 operator, my information... From my birthday to my fucking social, my blood type, my name, my address, what I was feeling, all my allergies, all that. I had told the person, the 911 operator, the fire department, the EMT workers. And then I got to the hospital. I had to tell the nurse. She was the, the first person that asked me. I told her the same shit. And then at some point they were like rolling me into the emergency room. And there was a guy there, and again, he was asking me the same information. By the time I had gotten to him, I was like, listen, bro. He was asking me questions, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Because at that point, I was just so fucked up. And he came out like a dick, and he was like, well, if you don't know, then how can I help you? And I was, yo, I grabbed the thing of the bed, the metal part on the bed. And I was like, well, how the fuck are you helping me if you being a dick? I was like, this is your job. You're supposed to fucking be like, you're supposed to be professional. Like, I just said the same information to the lady who's wheeling me in, to the guy who's walking with me, my fucking bracelet I already have on, like, has my information. Like, I spazzed out on him. They wheeled me past him. And then there was a guy, sur a surgeon, a doctor. I didn't know. I didn't know he was a surgeon yet, but... He was a doctor. Um, I could tell by his scrubs right after that altercation that I had with one of the intake people. Um, when they were wheeling me away from the intake person into the emergency room, that doctor kind of stopped the gurney and was like, give me her chart. I heard, I remember him saying it, like, give me her chart. And I guess he was like reading it, following me. And... 
he ordered like he literally told them send her for this or for that or like he was telling them what to do so i assumed he was just going to be he was an emergency room doctor he was the one that was going to be taking care of me and they put me in like a little corner in the emergency room the emergency room was pure pandemonium felt like rikers island with gurneys um there was a million things happening there was a million people moving past me walking past me i'm screaming i'm crying i'm in pain and i kind of just felt like i was alone which i was you know and a few it probably was a few minutes but it didn't necessarily feel like a few minutes to me it felt longer than that um, they moved me from where they had me to like a, a little, a separate room. They put me in a separate room and somebody, one of the doctors came to the door of the room and was like, what's your pain level? Cause I was screaming and I was like a hundred. They gave me morphine. It didn't do shit for me. They gave me, I was in the emergency room for two days. They gave me morphine. They gave me the fentanyl. Like nothing was working for the pain. It was fucking terrible. The pain was terrible. The, the. Again, the feeling like I just couldn't breathe. It kept that feeling right there. My chest kept getting worse and worse. It got to the point where my chest cavity started to feel like this right here started to feel like it was crushing, like in, going in. It was just terrible. And then they 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 stopped me from drinking or eating anything I couldn't eat. I couldn't even have ice chips. I was those first two days were like wild, wild. And then Whenever I had to use the bathroom, like if I had to pee or something, they kept, they had me in Pampers. They freaking, it, it was it was fucking insane. It was insane the first two days in the emergency room, and afterwards, you know, Izzy came, my sister was there, my man was there, and just trying to get answers, trying to find out what the fuck was going on, and I was in pain and pain. Finally, the second day like one o'clock in the morning probably when the nurses were switching the nurse that i had originally was an asshole when she was switching out she had brought the new nurse in she brought the new nurse that was going to be with me for the remainder of the night she brought that nurse in and was like oh this is going to be your nurse this is whatever whatever this is her case whatever she was explaining to the other nurse and when she first came in the room she was like oh she was like how are you feeling and i was like in pain still like what do you mean i had been fucking crying to her for the whole fucking time her whole shift and she kept telling me yeah yeah i'm gonna come back i'm gonna come back and she never would come back my sister was pissed everybody was pissed so when she brought the new nurse in i think the new nurse kind of like saw it in my face like something's wrong you know because the the nurse that was on her way out the door was she made it seem like oh i didn't know you were still in pain and i was like are you dumb like what do you mean you know so the new nurse was like, kind of like peep game. And then like they left the room, not even five minutes later, the new nurse came back to my room and was like, what's going on? What do you need? What do you feel? And like, I, I did the same thing I did to the EMT work. I grabbed her, I was like, please do not leave me like this for another day. I've been here since yesterday. I'm in pain. I feel like I cannot breathe. This thing is not working for me. My mouth was all white, like I was dying of fucking thirst. Like I just wanted one ice chip. And the lady was like, yeah, yo, she looked at me and she was like, when, especially when I grabbed her, like I, when I held her arm and I was like, please just don't leave me here like this for another day. And she was like, I'm gonna be back in two minutes. She didn't come back in two minutes, but she, she came back. And when she came back, she was like, she gave me a little cup ice and she was like i called somebody like she looked at my chart and i don't even think it was 20 minutes later two doctors came down literally the way they took me out of the emergency room was like some shit out of a movie which shout out to izzy because she got the shit on film but i i think that was like the one moment in the emergency room that i wasn't screaming for those two days because I was like kind of in shock because when they came down, like they got my name and stuff, they already knew like my case. I guess the lady had given them a rundown, the nurse. 
And literally the doctor, both of them was like, they they just came in like Rambo. They came in, they started unhooking the machines I was hooked up to. They started fixing, like putting everything in the gurney. They lifted up the the metal pieces of the gurney. Girl. And they were like, they introduced themselves to me, but like it was so fast that I barely even rem remember what they said. And they were like, we're going upstairs. And we were like, we, we were all like, cause I wasn't like, what, where are we going? What are we doing? You know? And um, they didn't even tell like my sister or my man, they didn't say nothing. They just came in. Y'all here with her? Cool, come on, let's go, we out. And, like, the nurses were all like, wait, wait, like, where you going with bed number or whatever? And they were like, we're leaving, we're taking her, she's going upstairs, blah, blah. And, like, they literally rushed me through, like I said, the Rikers Island of emergency rooms. And they brought me upstairs, they ended up bringing me to the ICU. It was, like, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. And we got upstairs, and the, the guy was like, to, as they were like hooking me up to the machines upstairs in the ICU, they were telling the the two the two doctors, which later found out one was an attending, one, one was a surgeon, was telling the staff, the nurses in the ICU, get her this, get her that, you know, telling doctor language. They would speak in their language, and the nurses that were there that first night were amazing. They you know flew to like do what they had to do by the time they by the time the doctors were done setting me up the nurses came in to like get me comfortable and situate me and hooked me up to the machines to the IV, hooked me up got me some fucking pain medicine that actually was like working they put some green things on my feet like on my legs and the doctors went out and spoke to my sister my my man and my my daughter and was explaining to them like what was going on. The doctor came in after they gave me the pain meds and I was calm. And that was when they explained to me, you have gallstones, which it made me angry at first when they told me because I, like I said, I was just in the fucking hospital. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean, you know? But then when he explained to me more in detail, he was like, um, is very dangerous because you also have your pancreas is extremely inflamed and it's infected and it's he the doctor told me straight up he was like this is something that I've not seen to this extent he was like this whatever is going on or triggered this has like been going on for quite some time which like I said I've been going through the pain in my back for the last two years now another thing I didn't never knew that stones gave you pain in your back. But I guess because my pancreas was so enlarged that it was putting pressure, at least that's how they explained it to me. It was putting pressure on my back. So the whole time they giving me muscle relaxers and all this shit that they were giving me was really not doing much, but just masking the issues. There must have been a stone that has escaped from the gallbladder and made its way through. I don't know if it was like the intestines or what it was, that kind of might have like triggered the pain but at some point during the day i might have passed that stone and not even realized it because at first they were saying they were going to do two surgeries they had to extract the stone that had been released and then extract the gallbladder and so they were going to do those two surgeries separately but they had to wait before they did any surgery because um they wanted to make sure that the infection was gone in my pancreas before they opened me up because they didn't want, you know, to make me at risk for anything. It was just so much shit that was like going on at once that after the initial anger subsided, I was like just grateful that I had an answer to like what the fuck's been going on, you know? Right now, I can't finish the rest of my story, which I did not think it was going to take me this long to tell my story, but. I actually have to go. I gotta go back to the hospital. I have a follow-up appointment for the surgery. So I'm about to go to that now. When I finish with that, I'm gonna come back and try to finish this because I'm trying to get this video out for you guys because I know a lot of you guys are just like, what the fuck is going on, you know? I see you guys. For me, it's gonna be a while. For y'all, it's gonna be like a second.
from the 20th of March all the way to the 2nd of April, which the 2nd of April is when they finally did the surgery. It was basically a waiting game of just checking my levels to see if the infection had gone away, to see if the inflammation had gone down, and a waiting game as far as that's concerned. And then just pain management is basically what the, the doctors were focused on, just trying to get my pain under control. When I tell y'all that when I went into the hospital, I weighed 143 pounds. And when I came out of the hospital, I weigh like 115 or like 114. I lost about 26 or 27 pounds. The mental toll that being in the hospital took what has taken on me has been something that kind of blindsided me. Um, obviously, I didn't know what to expect going into this whole ordeal. But I think that there were certain elements of my time in the ICU that took a real toll on my mental health. I had to relearn how to walk. <laughs> and it's crazy because usually people go in, the, the pain from gallstones is immeasurable. Anyone who's ever had them will tell you, right? But usually people go in for this procedure and come out the same day or the very next day. So the fact that I was there for almost three weeks and in the ICU was like insane. I didn't uh, watch TV much. I think I watched like one or two basketball games with my man, like toward the end of my stay. But for the most part, I just sat there thinking yeah I think that I needed time to process a lot a lot when I tell you that I was sitting in the hospital I was sitting in the ICU and I was I found myself a few different times coming to grips with the fact that my father's no longer here I lost my father in 2020 you know I um was sitting in the ICU and processing the fact that I took a lot of really huge detrimental losses in the last few years and just everything that I've gone through, especially in the last few years. The last three weeks in the ICU gave me nothing but time to actually face a lot of the things that I've gone through and a lot of the things that I've honestly been pushing away trying to keep myself busy with work and taking care of everyone else just so that I can avoid dealing with certain emotions not that I was doing that purposely And I don't know, maybe maybe that's the reason why, maybe that's part of the reason why things happened the way that they did so that I can face what I needed to face and get a grip, I guess. My stay in the ICU was incredible to say the least when I tell you that there are things that First of all, it felt, it felt like I was in prison because I couldn't leave. I felt like for the first two weeks, I didn't even get off the bed. I couldn't get off the bed. And so when I tell you that I basically had to relearn how to walk, 
it's it's just been one hell of a fucking journey new york had its first earthquake which it's not the first earthquake um new york has had earthquakes before it's just not something that's super common uh but i'll tell you that i was sitting in the bed and the room was shaking the floor was shaking my iv machine went from being here to being next to my television in the other end of the room and i knew it was an earthquake and i just was like so numb so numb also the pain management aspect of it was really i'm still trying to sit with that i'm still trying to understand whatever it is i'm needing to understand from it because i have a lot of people in my life that have suffered with addiction and so to be in a position where you need it you need that hit you know you need that that just that 15 seconds of relief it did something to me it, it really did something to me and I thank God that I in my experience was lucid enough and focused enough even in the pain to understand what was happening because I feel like, first of all, I feel like you don't even realize how, like that. You don't realize how quick you can gain an addiction or how quick you can become an addict, right? You don't realize, I, I don't believe you realize, you know, I'm going to smoke this right now and become an addict for the rest of my life or for the next 20 years or... I'm going to have this drink and become an addict for the next 15 years of my life. I don't believe that you realize it in the moment where it's happening. And so my experience in the hospital, I'm grateful that I was, like I said, lucid and focused enough to like understand, holy shit, this is what it's like, you know, because like I said, there was so many times that I was screaming in agony and just hunched over and like in pain and bowled up and in the fetal position whether it was four in the morning two in the afternoon six in the morning like the pain came whenever the pain came you know there was never a trigger it was never something i was doing or not doing something i was eating something i something i needed to eat there wasn't something that was setting off the pain the pain would just come and just be ruthless and there were so many times where it would come on and I still had an hour, sometimes even two hours before I can get the actual medication that would help. They were giving me Tylenol, they were giving me different forms of medication for pain and nothing was working. Like nothing was working besides one specific medication. It's called Dil Dil Dilaudid, I believe it was called, something with a D. And also, I noticed that it was only working when they would give it to me through the IV, like straight through the IV. So like, you guys are gonna see, cause I have taken footage of certain things, my arms, I definitely took footage of that. I still have like markings, um, just bruises on my arms and stuff and scabbing and stuff from all the different IVs they kept having to move around today. They actually took more blood from me. So that medication, that, that pain medication was only working when they would give it to me. You know, when you have the IV, the butterfly put on you, um, the medication I noticed only really worked when they would give it to me straight through the IV, like straight through the, the needle. Whenever they had me hooked up to the IV, like whenever there was a line for antibiotics or, you know, just like vitamins and stuff like whenever they had a line pumping something giving me something through the ivy and they would give me the dilated pain medicine through that line and it would like mix in with the ivy or the antibiotics it would take a while to kick in 
um, and it wouldn't give me the pain relief that it would give me when it was being shot straight through my veins. I'm telling you guys this because I know this is, I'm going to have to put like a trigger warning in the beginning of this video, but I'm telling you guys this because these are all things that I was sitting there noticing, like, it can be, because that medication too that dilated, it made me, I was doped out. I ain't even going to hold you. You guys are going to see. Like I said, there's a lot of footage um, that we took, uh, that I took, or that Izzy took, that my man took. Um, and whenever it was someone else recording me, I, I told them, yo, record this. Even if you give me a minute of footage, just record it, because I want my people to see like what life is like, you know, like what is going on. But anytime I would get that medication, even when it was like being sh put straight through the ivy, it would work for maybe a good 20 minutes of pain relief. And quickly I realized that if I allowed myself to fall asleep, and like if nobody was there with me when I got the medication and I was able to go to sleep, that was my best bet. Because even if it gave me an hour, maybe two of sleep, then that was the most time I was going to get of pain relief. Whereas if they gave me the dilated and it gave me the pain relief, but I didn't go to sleep and I stood awake, it would give me 20 minutes of like pain relief and then the pain would start already coming back by 20 minutes. Like I would already feel it coming back. And so even with what they were giving me, the only thing, only, the only thing that, that did work didn't even work for a long period of time. And so I'm saying all of this because when I tell you guys that I've always been compassionate and tried my very best to be understanding because I know so many people who have suffered from addiction. And so it always hits close to home for me. This experience in the hospital gave me that much more compassion for people, that much more of an understanding even for people who go through an experience, whether they get over it or don't get over it. You know, addiction is something that is extremely heartbreaking, gut-wrenching, you know? Like, because when I tell you that I would be screaming, screaming my lungs out in agony and and even vomiting, throwing up, and they would give me the medication and I instantly would like, I would literally go from like screaming my lungs out, crying hysterical to like, as soon as they put it through the vein, I would be like down like that. Like, like I said, you guys are going to see snippets of just the process that I went through. I'm very grateful that the hospitals have. I'm really grateful that they took their oath seriously, you know, and just, and didn't fold, you know, cause there were so many times that I was there screaming in agony. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if one of them would have been like, it's a half an hour before your next dose is scheduled but like you're screaming like a maniac and so just to shut you up i'm gonna give you a hit of something you know what i'm saying like i'm just grateful that certain things are in place because i saw firsthand like how quick how quick people's whole lives can turn around and be turned upside down you know uh, and without them even realizing it like it this this time down has really opened my eyes to a lot like I thought I thought that because I knew so many people who have suffered from addiction in my life that I had a pretty good understanding of it and I think I do but like as much as I already understood as much as I already was compassionate about I'm even more compassionate about it I'm even more understanding about it I'm even more like my heart goes out to people even more now and I never thought that that was even possible there was times where I would get up 2 30 3 o'clock in the morning and when I could 
get up at the end of my time in the ICU. I would get up and go to the window and I'm in my neighborhood, right? Born and raised here and I didn't even realize where I was because being secluded in a room, in a bed for that, even that amount of time, um, it, it does something to your brain. You know, it really does something to your brain. I, I had visitors every day. My man showed up every single day. Every single day that man was there, whether he was there after work, fighting with security to get at least an hour, um, or if he was there on a fucking Saturday or Sunday and he was there throughout the whole day for visiting hours. But because I was in the ICU, the visiting hours was not really long. Visiting hours was over and it was still daylight outside. And they started around like, I think it was 11 or 12 p.m. And was over by like 6 or 7. And so that may seem like a lot of time, but when you're in a bed, in a room for a long time, that's not even a fraction of the day, you know? And so, of course, my mom was there. My sister showed up damn near every day. Um, of course, Izzy was there. My cousin, I actually have family that works in the hospital. And so my cousin would actually get to see me in the middle of the night when she, cause she works third shift. And so my Virgo would come and check on me. And sometimes I would wake up and she would be sitting in the room with me. We would talk if, if I could talk, you know, cause there was some nights where I just, we just sat there looking at each other for a whole like hour break. I just didn't know what to say or didn't have anything to say. I was like fried. My brain just felt fried is what it felt like. Um, so for the better half of the day, I was just in my mind, you know, in my head. And um, I, I, I also want to say too, cause I, I could use this time to talk about the negative shit that I experienced especially you know not every nurse not every doctor like with every profession you know not everybody has good intentions and so i could sit here and go in about my negative experiences in the few weeks that i was there but i just want to give a huge shout out to anybody who works in the medical field and actually takes their job seriously or actually has compassion for the people that they're taking care of because I did run into quite a few nurses and technicians, um, surgeons that looked out for me and knew me by name and checked in on me and looked out for me, whether it was three in the morning or two in the afternoon. Even the guy, um, I, I explained to you guys in the first half of this, there was a guy that kind of like took my chart and was like telling them like what to give me and what to test to put me in for um in the very beginning of me coming into the emergency room and when I first got to the ICU this same guy came up to the ICU unit and came to speak to me and at first I was like the first like two minutes of him being in the room talking to me I didn't recognize him I was lit, I was high basically, I was on the dilated, and like I said, it only lasts for about 15, 20 minutes, so by the time the doctor had come in to talk to me, I was, it was like already wearing off, so the first few minutes of him being in the room talking to me, I'm hearing him, and then after like a few minutes, like when I was like coming back, when I locked in with his eyes and realized who he was, I recognized him as that guy that was there in the very beginning. I lost my shit. Like I was just crying, bawling. And I, like, I was like, thank you so much. I remember you from when I first came in. Like this guy was probably not even on my case. He just was there standing there or like passing by when I was coming in and having this whole ordeal in the entranceway of the emergency room. And um, he just wanted to help, you know? And ever since that first day, he was locked in. Like afterwards, I was explaining it to my sister and my man, like this guy, he came in and he was the guy that was there in the beginning. I was explaining it to them the next day. And he just so happened to come in the room and my man and my sister was in the room with me and we ended up getting his name and 
when we realized what his name was we realized that he had been harassing the nurses like we uh, my room was like my first room in the ICU was right in front of the nurses station and so they would I would hear them like what they were saying and what they were talking about and so the uh the guy would call all the time and like see how bed four was doing that was my first room was bed four my second room was bed five but um he would call all the time to see how i was doing to make sure i was you know getting the medication i needed getting the antibiotics that i needed like i heard a few nurses like yes we know we got it we're okay like they were already annoyed with his ass so i was really um, taken back with him specifically also there was it was crazy right because I remember the first day that I got a male nurse and I was a little bit like oh man like this is a little bit weird because for a lot of the days I was there I was in pampers it's real shit you know I couldn't get off the bed um, and so immediately like when he uh, came in the male nurse came in I was like fuck and I didn't you know I never want to be a problem for like the staff I never want to give them more work you know or like complain but I was just like damn I was a little bit like weirded out by it at first um, again I'm not speaking for all male nurses but like my experience my experience was amazing I think that of all the nurses that I had my whole time in the hospital. So my male nurse, um, I lucked out. I was with him for like the last three or four days that I was in the hospital. He was amazing. He was fucking amazing. Like he was extremely communicative. He was he was amazing. He was like the best. Like even my mom was like, yo, like he is a one. Like I have to seriously get him something, buy him a fucking bottle of something or something because he really looked out. He really looked out and I, I just, I'm, ex I'm super grateful. You know, I'm super grateful it was hell going through the process and going through everything that I went through. But I understand that, I, you know, things had to go the way that they went, the ways that they went for specific reasons, like even down to like the medication. Like I said, there was so many times I was there screaming in pain, but they couldn't do anything for me that would not make my situation worse you know like their hands were tied they couldn't just give me the medication just because i was in pain um because it literally could have caused me a fucking addiction you know like it could have really fucked me up you know and so i understand now you know i understand now you know like i, I just don't even know really how else to put it into words the day that I left was very surreal. I didn't, I didn't realize I was going home. Um, they came. They told me that I could leave. T they, you know, the way that they said it was like today could be the day, but I just was there for so long that I just felt like I was never gonna leave. I really felt like that. And so, on the last day that I was there, I was out walking in the nurses station, and the lady, the guy looked at me, and the guy was like somebody coming to pick you up today and I was like and he was like you are discharged already you just need somebody to pick you up and I was like what and it's crazy because I on the weekends always tell my man like stay home don't come right at 11 or 12 whenever visiting I would start like I will always tell everybody like don't come right at that time you're gonna be here for six hours just watching me in pain you know so that day my man didn't come like right away he like took a little bit of time and it was on a saturday and um 
he, he came, he got me, and walking out of the ICU was extremely surreal. Walking out was extreme. I don't really know how to like word it. I don't know how to put it into words what I felt, but it just, I, I was so emotional. I was crying when I left. I wasn't walking 100%. Like I still, still to this day, I'm still wobbling. Right now I'm sitting here, I'm in pain. Um, Cause I'm just sitting in one position. I can't, I still can't, I'm still suffering from like the inflammation from the pancreas. And so I can't have, like I can't be in one position for too long, whether I'm standing, whether I'm laying down, so sleeping is still not fun for me. <laughs> um, showering since I've been home has been out of pocket. <laughs> I was afraid to shower the first even few days of being home because of the incisions from the surgery. When I finally went for surgery, they took me in. Um, they did it. I think it's called laparoscopic. I think it's what it's called. The machine helped them. And so my scars, I'll show you guys, the scars are like small. Um, they're fresh now, they're literally just days old now. So they still look kind of like ratchet. But I had a C-section 18 years ago that you can barely even see. So I know these little scars are not gonna really look like much in the next probably even few months if I take care of them. So I'm not even really worried about that. I'm glad that I don't have the pain that I was having prior to going to the hospital. Um, the back pain that I've always suffered from, thank God, knock on wood, I haven't gotten that since having the surgery. Um, the pain that I'm going through now is just like the pain from the surgery itself, just my body healing and my muscles getting back into the motion of moving every day. I'm literally still having trouble and struggling with like, getting off the bed and like just doing day-to-day -day things throughout the day so yeah it's been quite a journey and it's nowhere near done but like i said i could say that i've been in jail that i've been in hell that i've been going through the worst of the worst and even though that's accurate to what i felt i understand now that everything happens for a reason and I'm just grateful like I look at it now and I'm like I'm in pain now but like even the day that I came the day before I came out the hospital I was getting a pain on my side that I couldn't breathe in because it would like be like a sharp pain or I couldn't hiccup or I couldn't cough or I couldn't laugh because it would be a sharp pain it wasn't consistent but it was just a sharp pain but it was hurt like a bitch and I started getting it the day before coming out, which was like the day after surgery. And for the first few days of being home, I had that pain and it was the worst. But as I was thinking about it, even today in my follow-up, I'm like, I no longer have that pain. Cause I coughed today when I was in going to the hospital and I was like, cause when I was coughing, I was anticipating getting that pain and I didn't get it. And I'm like, oh, I can yawn, I can do certain, I can move certain ways and I, I'm not getting that pain anymore. So I'm understanding that a lot of the pains that I'm going through now are just literally growing pains, just healing and getting through the motions. But of course, going through it, it's just not easy. You know, it's just not easy for anyone. I've seen my body look ways that I've never, like, yo, when I tell y'all, I'm looking like a werewolf, all right? My legs, my underarms were so hairy. <laughs> like, I listen, I'm a grown-ass woman, 35 years old. I have had a child. I'm Latina, and I also suffer from PCOS. So I get hair in places that I probably shouldn't be getting hair because, 
life, right? But like, to have my man there every day to see me, I had it showered, really. You know, it was, it was weeks, I was in pain, TMI, but like, I was using the bathroom on myself. Like, I just was going through the worst. And that was another thing that really took a really big toll. Still now, like, I I, ha I struggle with that. Like, I sit down and I'm like, yo, like, I need to, like, get it the fuck together because I've never seen myself like this. So just that itself, too, um, just took a really big toll has taken a really big toll on me it's been one hell of a journey and like i'm still going through the motions like i said um i went to an appointment today it's monday um i had a follow-up appointment and i gotta go back on wednesday you know i'm still going through it but i am gonna start vlogging again I'm going to start vlogging more of, I guess, my healing process. I didn't want to just go a month without posting a, a vlog and then just post another vlog. You know, I definitely wanted to sit down and have this talk with you guys and just kind of just let you guys know what I'm feeling, what I've experienced, what I've gone through, where my brain is at, you know, and then after i post this video um we'll get back into the vlogs weekly so at the end of this video you guys are gonna have probably a few minutes it's probably not gonna be long at all but i did record certain things especially towards the end of my stay when i was like able to like move around a little bit more when i started walking i had to actually do a blood transfusion at one point um before the surgery and we caught some of that on camera as well. Just different different snippets that I have. Um, I'm going to put them in um, at the end of this video just so that you guys can see. I, so I just wanted to sit down and explain to you guys what I was going through. And then at the end of this video, you guys will see more or less... Um, what I was seeing and what it was looking like for me on my side. So I am going to look really raw, really raunchy. Um, I am going to be loud. I might be cursing in some of the snippets. Um, life. I'm glad that I'm hoping that this is over. I'm hoping that this is a new leaf, you know, I get to turn a new leaf. I'm hoping that I get to experience life again without that back pain because it was not fun dealing with it for the last few years. And I, I've been thinking about it too. I'm like, I have Izzy's birthday is coming up at the end of this month. I have um, some really dope things planned for the next few weeks, especially coming into May. And so these are things that were already in the works. And... I'm just grateful that even though this set me back in a lot of ways, um, I'm grateful that it happened when it did because it kind of technically happened in, a, in an ideal time, if I'm being honest. You guys will understand as the weeks progress, but um, it's it's been a journey. I don't like look at me. I'm looking hit my grit out here. This is anxiety. This is what anxiety looks like. Literally chopping my nails off like piece by piece because of the anxiety of just what I've been going through and what I'm going to be experiencing as far as the pain. It feels good to be home. Um, Just in the comfort of my own home, it feels good. But I, I understand that even with that i have to be like more stern with my healing process i can't be so comfortable because i'm home that i start slacking um especially as far as like just getting up and 
moving around, trying to get my mobility back, um, getting back to work, and just spending time with my loved ones. Um, I have a lot of catching up to do as far as Izzy is concerned, uh, which the end of this video, she was recording like when she would go to church and do certain things, she was still recording. So the end of this video, the last few minutes of this video is gonna be kind of a vlog style of like a gist of what the last few weeks have been like. So that's what the end of this video is gonna be like. I am extremely grateful for you guys, extremely grateful for all the messages and all the love that you guys have sent my way, but also um, all the prayers that you guys sent and just for the fact that you guys have like held me down and not tried to rush me through my journey and not been so overbearing or like so nosy, you know, like sometimes, sometimes shit goes down that way. You go through something and people just so invested that they don't give a fuck about your personal space. They just want to know what's going on. You know, I've seen that happen so many times and. I'm extremely appreciative of the fact that you guys let me go through what I needed to go through and were very have been very patient with me. And even though it's gonna be like a slow pickup, we're definitely gonna be back with the vlogs weekly. And um, I may throw some videos in between then because I have certain things going on now um, with this new part of my life that I have going on so I love you guys and I appreciate you guys wholeheartedly um editing this is going to be a mind fuck in 10 halves because of all the ums and all the pauses and like I said I'm just I've not really done story time type videos and so editing this is gonna be a doozy for me but I love you guys and um It just feels good to be back. And I'm not even back 100% yet, but it does feel good to be back in motion. Definitely. Here goes nothing. Good morning, fam. And welcome back to another vlog. Because it's Wednesday. And I don't think I even started the vlog yet. And it's literally Wednesday. You see the little <coughs> little garden right here? <laughs> anyway, I am on my way to go check up on my uncle and see how he's doing. See if he needs anything. <sighs> this week, this week has been atrocious. I'm not even gonna hold you. I am not even gonna lie and try to front on this camera. Well, we got back from our trip on Sunday. I hope you guys can hear because it's pretty fucking windy. We got back on Sunday and the ride itself was good. Like it was smooth. I wasn't in too much pain. I already told you guys, on a day-to-day, -day, I'm at like between a 5 and a 7 on a 1 to 10 pain scale, but it's manageable for me. I was okay for the ride. I was anywhere between like a 4 and a 6. Hold on, because it's about to get real loud real quick. Like, what is she doing? Don't worry about it, fam. Don't worry about it. Oh, shit. 11 11 on this car. 11 11. Never seen that before. But so the ride was all right. It was manageable coming back on Sunday. And then, literally, once we got to the neighborhood, once we got to. I want to, I want to, honestly, I want to say, once I got to my block. The surge of pain, which was so bugged out to me, the way that it happened, like I couldn't even stand straight. I was literally walking, 
hunched over, like face forward, like that. And I don't even know. I nothing that I could think of would have triggered that because I didn't eat anything out of the ordinary or do anything out of the ordinary especially within the last hour or two of the ride you know anyway from sunday to yesterday which was tuesday your girl was out of commission when i tell y'all that i have not even done any awareness calls which if you've been with me for a minute you know that even when i say i'm on vacation <laughs> Even when I say I'm not gonna record or not gonna work, I always do the calls. I literally have been in pain and trying to figure out the best course of action, I guess we could say, to manage the pain. Cause I already told y'all, <laughs> I'm not trying to sit around and take painkillers all day. That's just not what I'm trying to do. So, I've been trying to do different things as far as just like natural remedies and natural things um, to ease the pain. And I'm not even gonna lie that yeah, from like Sunday into Monday was strictly my back and then Tuesday into Wednesday, well, Monday into Tuesday, I felt like a weird sensation like in my stomach like my uterus i guess my ovaries i don't even know but like just a weird sensation i don't really know how i would explain it it's not something that's just like i feel the pain and i just feel the pain it's i feel the pain it comes then it goes for a little while then it comes back then it goes for a little while it's like that so very long story short i've been going through it physically so i didn't do sunday service i didn't even do the live on patreon like i literally when i tell you out of commission out of commission i don't even know how i've been still checking up on my uncle and like making sure i making sure he's good i don't know how i even gather the strength to do this every day because every day i come out check on him in the morning make sure he takes his medications and all that shit and then stay with him for a while and um i've still been doing that but i guess it's like a the love thing you know it's like i love him and i know ain't nobody else gonna do it so even if i gotta drag myself or roll myself i gonna make sure i get it done you feel me yeah, I ain't miss nothing but watching me in pain because I didn't record at all. Yesterday I um had to have a conversation with one of the teachers for IZ school, the high school. I can't wait till she's out of that building so I can really talk my shit. Truly. And, and I hope that by the time she's gone, from the building that mentally and emotionally I hope that I'm just like past it and don't even address it or don't even have to address it but like this building this school the school system because it's just not okay the shit that they be doing the way that they be coming up with new regulations switching shit up the lady yesterday was like oh well you should have known by the emails bitch the only time i get emails is when y'all telling me my daughter's absent and my i call my daughter and my daughter's in the school building it's the only time i get the emails the only time i, I get a phone call from one of y'all motherfuckers is when there's a payment due for senior dues or some stupid shit with it that gotta do with money like I'm over it, bro. I think I'm the most frustrated because I know that we didn't need to be dealing with this shit an extra year. So I guess that's where most of my frustration comes in. But I definitely understand, you know, Izzy just wasn't ready to graduate. She just felt, 
and not academically it just like emotionally she just wasn't ready to like be an adult you know and so i get that part but bro i've been ready for this shit to be over with high school since she got in the building when remote learning was off the table and the kids were back in school i was already over it the first like week with this fucking building with the staff the whole shit the whole shebang and we're about to go to the supermarket now my ribs hurt which is crazy anyway i'm about to go to the supermarket pick up a few items because like i said i'm about to go to my uncle's house and check up on him this week started this week's vlog started very late but that's because my week literally is starting late i haven't done much of anything but be in pain and even though i'm still currently in pain i'm trying to thug it out so welcome back to another vlog. When the, the pharmacist give me the other extra medication, I'll come and give it to you, okay? Can I have ice or water? Let me go find out if you can. Did you have abdominal pain? Did you vomit or anything? Early? Seven times. So okay. then, okay, I'll give you some ice, a little bit of ice, okay? okay. Medicine before? Yeah, I can't remember anything. Okay. 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 Relax. Hi. Oh. Oh. Has it stopped at all since you came? No. She sounds all day, but. This week has been a hell of a week. I don't know how else to put that. Basically, she came in yesterday, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday, Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. My mom was in a lot of pain all day when I was in school. And then um, she was throwing up a lot. And she ended up calling an ambulance to take her to the hospital where we are right now. She was in the emergency for over 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I think over 24 hours, I feel. They just moved her. Yeah, they literally just moved her to ICU. She was there from, I wanna say, 6.30 p.m., 5.30, something like that, when she had called the ambulance, to, what time is it? 9.05 p.m the next day. They just transferred her to ICU. She was in a lot of pain. The doctors are coming home. Yeah, she knows. She said, "Give us a few." Okay, sorry, yes, sorry. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Don't we don't bring her. It's alright. We're not the transporters. Mm -hmm. We are just want. Uh, she has to be up here. She can't be down there. Right. Thank um, you. And we moved her a little too far. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank
to move down from the gallbladder down into the intestine whilst it's moving down it blocks Everything a tube else. a tube that's coming not just from the liver to the intestine but one that's coming from what we call we call on this side a pancreas so there's a little connection between this pancreas and that same little duct where that stone is coming down so as he's coming down he blocks mm. he blocks that tube I so, see. Know, it's like it's like three things uh, joining down here but that little stone is coming from the gallbladder here some things are coming from the liver here and then this is coming from the pancreas so when this little stone is coming down here he blocks this one here for a little while so hopefully it, it just continues passing and mm -hmm. it gets better and then we can do the take out this this reservoir of the mm -hmm. stone but once you take out this reservoir then no more stones can go down and block this one so that was the reason for the pancreas being inflammated that's correct okay but it's dangerous it's mm -hmm. dangerous uh, usually they go through they're a little tiny so once he goes through then he gets he doesn't stay blocked if he stays blocked then you have to call in or to call in the gastroenterology to urgently come and remove the stone mm -hmm. which is down here not in the gallbladder the source is the gallbladder but he is passing and gets stuck a little here okay so if he continues within two three days he is better and we can do the operation by monday okay 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 once you take this then no more stone can go there right yeah, so I have what a kind of okay. person yes yeah. what kind of like surgery would that be the robot which assists us we we drive the robot right right, right. Okay. Okay. So was, you, was that your yeah. question too yeah, yeah. okay he's not he probably found, he probably realized that she was down there the entire time and was mad. That was the explanation. I don't know if you guys could hear it, but basically to reiterate what he said, the gallbladder, the gallbladder has had to be removed. Wait, are they talking about her? So basically, she has stones in her gallbladder, which is attached. The tubes from her gallbladder are attached to her pancreas and another body part. It filters. The, it filters out, right? So usually they pass, but because there's so many, but there was like, there's one stuck, basically. It came out of the gallbladder. Yeah. And yeah, and it's stuck there, so it's now blocking the pancreas and the... It's inflamed. The aggregated. things, yeah, the things that the pancreas lets out. So now the pancreas is, is inflamed. And I, guess I think that is the reason for her back problems, though. That so. That's probably the reason for her back problems. And, um, yeah, yeah, and her stomach issues, which is the main reason that we came, yes, that she came here yesterday because she could not take the pain anymore. So that's what's happening. She's in the room right now. Um, we're waiting for the doctors. I'm getting close here because the doctor's coming out. Um, we're waiting for the doctors to let us in, which he said he will. They're just setting up the room. So you guys will see her soon.
and the enemy doesn't stand a chance. So Jesus wasn't fighting back in the flesh. In fact, he set this all up. Because of you, 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 because of all of you in the balcony, because you are worth it. God in human form could have argued his way out of this. In fact,
I just want to walk across. Because that is left, yeah, we do right, left, left. Y'all gotta jump actually. We're not stepping, you need to jump. Let's go. It's called left, right, jump. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Right. You need tissues? Left. Left. That's how this right. Is over. Right. Left, right. Something. So I'm using, that's what I said, you're going to use it, you lose it. So I can't. 